we got to be quiet again before we get over the railroad track. The decisions you make as a school bus driver affect the safety of your passengers. Nowhere are the right decisions more important than at railroad crossings. There's a lot going on inside and outside of a school bus at rail crossings. Extra precautions must be taken to decide smart and arrive safe. Everyone has driven a car across railroad tracks and not given it much thought. But driving a school bus is different. You are entrusted with the lives of children. Their safety is a top concern. School buses must stop before crossing the tracks, even if there's no indication a train is coming. Cal Lamon is a school bus safety advocate who goes around the country training bus drivers. The most important safety device on any school bus is the school bus driver and making smart decisions is an individual choice that every driver makes every time that he or she gets behind that wheel. Let's take a look at signs and signals and what they mean. The advance warning sign is usually the first sign you see when approaching a highway rail crossing. It's located a good distance ahead to allow a school bus driver to slow down and prepare to stop before reaching the crossing. Pavement markings consist of a railroad crossing symbol followed by a stop line. The stop line identifies the place nearest the tracks for you to stop. If there is no stop line, you are required to stop no closer than 15 feet and no farther than 50 feet from the nearest track. A cross buck sign marks all highway rail grade crossings. It means yield for most vehicles, but for school buses, it means stop. In addition to a cross buck, a stop or yield sign may also be included. No matter what the other signage is displayed, when a school bus approaches a cross buck, stop. Some rail crossings have a cross buck with flashing red lights and bells. School bus drivers should treat it like a stop sign, and when the lights begin to flash, do not cross. A train is coming. Many crossings have gates with flashing lights and bells. The gates are used to close the road when a train approaches. You must not go until the gates are completely raised and the lights go off. If there is more than one track, a sign below the cross buck will tell you the number. Make sure all tracks are clear before crossing. There are a wide variety of railroad crossing situations in terms of both the signs and signals and the layout of the crossing. School bus drivers should always expect a train and be aware that state laws and signage may vary with regard to highway rail grade crossings. longer and be inconvenient, but finding an alternate route that avoids railroad tracks is the safest way to go. And just because you don't have any railroad crossings in your district doesn't mean you won't ever cross them. Busing kids to sports games and other activities may take you over a railroad crossing. So when you get to a railroad crossing, it's important to have a game plan and to know what to do. That's why Operation Lifesaver developed a series of safety steps called Five Alive. Five Alive, Step 1, Prepare to Stop. It all starts with our first sign, the Advance Warning Sign. When you see the Advance Warning Sign, slow down, prepare to stop, and alert other vehicles of your intentions by tapping on the brakes and turning on the hazard lights. Step 2, Quiet. Alert the students for quiet by flashing the dome lights, making an announcement, I'm approaching railroad crossing, I need silence. Using a noise suppression switch, turning off radios and fans. Quiet on board your bus will help you hear the train's horn and focus your attention as you check for a train. Quiet signals vary from school district to school district. Step three, 
Stop, open window and door. Stop between 15 to 50 feet from the tracks or at the stop line. Open the window and door and look both ways down the tracks. Avoid obstructed views, poles, mirrors, window posts by leaning forward or backward in your seat. Step four, double take. Do a double take by looking quickly again in both directions before crossing the tracks. And step five of the Five Alive drill, go. If no train is in sight, cross the tracks. If you're driving a manual transmission, do not shift gears and risk stalling on the tracks. If you see a train coming from either direction, do not cross. You cannot accurately judge a train's speed or distance. An optical illusion may make the train seem farther away and slower moving than it actually is. This train appears to be creeping along and suddenly it's at the crossing. Don't take a chance. Wait. Obstructed views can prevent drivers from seeing down the tracks at stop lines. Sometimes it's a matter of inching up past a pole or tree. Let's see what this school bus instructor recommends to her new driver. And this is where you have obstruction and you will need to rock and roll. Listen. And proceed. If you can't see safely down the tracks in both directions, talk to your supervisor. Contact railroad or highway authorities and ask them to remove the obstruction. Beware of getting too close to the tracks or a train may clip you. Trains overhang by at least three feet on each side of the tracks. Leave plenty of room for a train's overhang. When the five alive steps aren't followed, disaster can strike. Buffalo, Montana, 1998. The school bus driver had completed most of the Five Alive steps and was about to cross when a student asked the driver a question about some music. The distracted driver answered the student, then crossed without looking down the tracks a second time. A train struck the school bus, killing two brothers. In that particular situation, that driver was interrupted by a child and did attend to the child. It, it had to do with a cassette player. But the problem was that the driver did not go back and scan all of the stimuli that he had to look at at that moment. It is going back and reviewing all the systems that are going on to make sure that nothing has changed. Because as a driver, things can change in nanoseconds. And that was, that was the fatal error. Don't be distracted at railroad crossings. If you're interrupted, start your Five Alive safety steps again. Fox River Grove, Illinois, 1995. A substitute school bus driver unfamiliar with the rail crossing started across multiple tracks. Unbeknownst to the driver, when the light turned red right on the other side, there wasn't enough room for the bus to clear the tracks. As the train approached, three feet of bus extended over the tracks. Inside the school bus, the radio noise drowned out both the train's horn and students' warnings about the oncoming train. They all ran to the front of the bus to get out of the way. The impact killed seven students. All of that would not have happened if this particular driver had been able to spend some time figuring out, do I have enough room to move this 40-foot bus so that it's going to clear the tracks? Many errors were made at Fox River Grove. When traffic lights and railroad crossings are in close proximity, there's always the potential that traffic may back up, not leaving enough room for a school bus to fit on the other side. Don't cross the tracks unless there is plenty of room on the other side. This space is called containment or storage. Take into account a train's three feet overhang from the tracks and your bus's length. Well, I think it's important not for the bus driver just to know the length of the bus, but the bus driver has got to walk the length of that bus prior to ever beginning uh, a route, meaning that there is a visual acquaintance that the driver has with that machine. 
And I think most drivers, after walking around the bus and physically getting accustomed to it, are going to be able to make smart decisions on the basis of what they have seen. With the light red and traffic waiting, this bus driver made the smart decision to wait before crossing. School bus drivers are being trained to have at least 15 feet of clearance once they cross the tracks. How would you avoid the mistakes at Fox River Grove? Run your route before carrying students across it. Review containment areas to determine when you can cross safely. Eliminate excess noise at the crossing to hear the train. If you have a containment area on your route that will not safely hold your bus, ask to adjust your route. And finally, contact your supervisor on how to deal with it. Conestoga, Tennessee, 2000. A school bus driver from Murray County, Georgia, failed to stop at a crossbuck after turning the bus around in a parking lot on the Georgia-Tennessee line. Here's how a local newscast described it. The impact of the collision ripped the school bus off of its chassis, dragging it down the tracks, throwing the driver and some of the seven children out, sounding to nearby residents like an exploding bomb. I helped pull a small girl, I believe it was a blonde-headed girl from the bus that had massive head injuries. Three children were killed. The driver's daughter, also a passenger on the bus, was severely injured. An onboard camera caught the driver failing to stop. The driver had been ignoring the crossbuck for some time since a train was never running. When a bus driver believes that he or she has got this route down, and I know that there are not going to be any trains, uh, that's the time that the driver is setting himself, herself up for disaster. You always go in to a crossing assuming that there will be a train and take the necessary steps. Savannah, Georgia, 2005. Four children were put in harm's way by their school bus driver. Bells were ringing, warning lights flashing, and the gates were down when the unthinkable happened. With a train approaching, the bus driver had four kids get off the bus to lift the crossing arm so the bus could proceed. A mother saw the whole thing. The conductor is screaming out the windows at the children to get out of the way. With the train bearing down, the kids crossed over the tracks in front of the train to get back on the bus. They could have died. The train was so close. The school bus driver was immediately fired. Right before that, another bus came through and was doing the zigzag through it to get through those lights. Gates are blocking an intersection for a reason. A train is coming. Never lift the crossing arms. Never go around a gate. Contact the police or bus dispatcher if you feel there's a problem. The more you know about trains, the more cautious you'll be around railroad crossings. Here's a few train facts. It can take a mile or more to stop a train given its weight and size. Trains don't have steering wheels. They can't swerve. Trains are much bigger and heavier than buses. 400 loaded school buses would equal one loaded train. You have your uh, route all copied for you. We need to go over this route. Um, Before heading off with a loaded bus of kids, know your route. Know where the railroad crossings are. Drive your route and copy down the emergency notification number and the U.S. Department of Transportation identification numbers at your crossings. The posted numbers can take various shapes and sizes. Keep these phone numbers with you on the bus. Also give a copy to your dispatcher. If there's a problem at a crossing, you can provide the coordinates and the number to the dispatcher. As you scout your route, plan for an evacuation in the event your school bus gets stuck on the tracks. Determine an evacuation safe spot away from the tracks. This evacuation area is ideally at a 45 degree angle from the tracks in the direction of the train. Never cross a live track. Here's the evacuation drill. Scout and plan for an evacuation. Get the students safely out of the bus to the evacuation area. Call your dispatch office and give them the crossing numbers. 
In planning your route, make a list of the safety concerns. Work with your supervisor on resolving them. The safety of your passengers comes first. Each day, millions of kids ride school buses. Many of these buses cross railroad tracks, and each time they do, drivers go through the five alive safety steps. One, when you see the advance warning sign, prepare to stop. Tap the brakes, turn on hazard lights, slow down. Two, alert the students for quiet. Three, stop 15 to 50 feet from tracks. Open the window and door and look both ways. If there are obstructions, try to navigate past them. Four, do a double take. Quickly look both ways again. And five, if no train is in sight, cross the tracks. A school bus driver has to continually say to himself, herself, hey look, I've got one job to do right now. I've got the rest of my life. You know, I'm gonna be going home, I'm gonna have a cup of coffee. I'm gonna pick up my laundry, all the rest of that, but right now, I've got one thing to do. And that one thing that I have to do has implications not just for me, it's not just employment. It is protecting the lives of kids uh, who have to have a future because I remain focused. All right, how you doing? Bye-bye, bye-bye. Another safe bus ride home. Over the course of a year, four billion safe miles are driven by school bus drivers like you. Have a good weekend, man. Your passengers arrive safely because of your smart decisions at railroad crossings. What's the best thing that any of us could have said about our lives at the end of our lives? And that is that we gave somebody else a chance to live, somebody else a chance to experience his or her potential. And that's what driving a bus is all about. It's not a yellow door. It's a yellow door to a child's future. Decide smart, arrive safe.